Ladies and gentlemen, Andy here, author of the best syndicate on the internet. This is the Kieran and Loser show. Let's fucking go. Thank you. Great, guys. Imagine if I talked the entire video like this, and I did an entire self-improvement video talking in this voice. Would you take it seriously? No, you probably wouldn't fucking watch it. So, let's get straight into it. I, I want this to be a pretty casual, chill video. I've been, if I'm honest, I've been kind of like... A little bit, I don't think stress, but just tired doing this 365 day project. I know it's only like day, whatever fucking day it is. I, I haven't kept count. I've kept a spreadsheet, but whatever day it is, I guess I can look it up kind of. It is day 24 and I'm feeling a little bit tired with some of it. Not so much the project, but I'm doing these things every single day, either a YouTube short or a podcast or a video or an article or a picture. And on top of that, I'm doing coaching and I'm doing a bunch of these, you know, the 30 minute calls that I've been talking about. I think I've just been a bit busy, so I'm a little bit tired. So I think for the next couple of videos that I'm doing like this, my plan is to keep them super casual and super chill like this and just sort of chatty and, you know, keep it sort of chill and, and make it a lot easier on myself. That is, if you want that in philosophy form, that is me giving myself permission to suck. So if this sucks, brilliant, great, good. Hey, at least that means that I can relax a little bit. So bear with me, should be fine, should be fun. And I'm also giving myself permission to do a few more YouTube shorts. So for the next week, well, I've already done it for this week. I uploaded like a few, I've already made a few clips from videos what i'm doing is i'm taking a full video that i've done i'm just like clipping a little bit of that and i'm going fuck it there you go that's my youtube short so i'm gonna do that just over december a fair few of the things i upload will just be youtube shorts which will be like a little bite-sized version of andy's philosophy and stuff so it actually came out pretty decent they're pretty interesting so hopefully you guys will like them but in the new year i'm definitely going to sit down and do more of these like long form proper ones so don't stress this is me basically just giving myself permission to go a little easier while I'm super busy. And that's something that I recommend to all of you guys. And I actually yesterday with one of my coaching clients, we had a big long conversation about just finding ways to be a little more efficient or to cut down some of the tasks that you're doing when you're overwhelmed. And I funnily enough, just had this big conversation with my girlfriend, Emmy this morning about exactly the same thing. When you feel like there's a lot of stuff that you have on your plate and not enough time, find ways to make what you're doing more efficient or even cut out some of what you're doing find ways to relax a little bit more so yeah that's the mission for the next what 20 days of this project and then after that we'll get back on track with proper long form stuff so let's get into the actual video i'm going to be looking over here rather than at the screen because i'm going to be reading something that one of my old coaching clients reached out to me actually so this is a guy that i've, I've done a testimonial with um, I can't remember if I used his name in the testimonial or not in the video, in the interview with him. So I won't use his name just in case I, I haven't already. I can't remember. I can't remember if he wanted to be anonymous or not. So we'll keep him anonymous just in case. Anyway, he reached out to me. He told this story of a girl that he's been sleeping with or that he slept with or whatever. And she's a little bit bratty and he kind of likes that side. He's finding himself amused by it. And his question was essentially, how do you tame a bratty girl? And so we're going to talk about what brattiness is, you know, how it's a fun thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a cute thing. It's part of like a sexual dynamic. It, it can be part of BDSM as well, but it, you know, we can talk about the psychology behind it. And so I'm going to read out his question and just kind of react to it. And we'll talk about it a little bit. And if you're not sure what brattiness looks like, it's basically a girl having fun and teasing and being a little bit of a smart ass and answering you back and being cheeky and being cute and coy and funny and silly, right? Like like being little girly and, and adorable. What brattiness is not is just complete rudeness. There is kind of a difference there, right? Like brattiness has this playful, fun element where she likes you and she's teasing a little bit the same way that guys tease women all the time, right? Like I'm someone that teases a lot. I make a lot of jokes. I'm very gentle with my teasing, but I will definitely tease and poke a little bit of fun. And, you know, you have fun with it, right? You make someone laugh. And so that's what brattiness is. What brattiness isn't is rudeness. So let's say you're with a girl, you know, I'll give an example, you know, you say to a girl that you're sleeping with or whatever, you say, hey, come here. And she has a big smile on her face and she goes, no, that's brattiness. 
right? She basically wants you to say, no, come here. And she'll go, no. And then you go, am I going to have to come over there and make you? And she'll go, maybe. Like that's brattiness, right? Like wanting you to be a little more dominant, wanting you to, in some cases, discipline her and give her a spank on the ass or, you know, make her do it. That's, that's brattiness. It's, it's kind of like fun element and it's very clear or there's a, there's a fun element to it. And it's very clear that she wants you to either, you know, dominate her or make her, make her do something or discipline her. Like it's fun. It's a fun little thing. Or it can often look like banter. Like maybe she's teasing a little bit and you tease back and you're kind of bantering each other. That can be a little bit of fun brattiness, right? Like, like teasing, gentle, gentle teasing. But an example of what brattiness isn't is you know, she's just outright rude to you. So she shit tests you. A lot of guys look at shit tests and shit test is a word that I don't use. I don't think there is such a fucking thing as shit test, but a lot of guys will call something a shit test and I'll come along and I'll say, that looks like the woman just insulted you. How is that a shit test? That's not banter. That's not brattiness. That's just an insult. So something like, you know, you hit on a woman and she says, oh, I'd never date bald guys. I mean, that's not an insult. That's her stating her preference, but that's not brattiness. Or you saying to a woman, hey, come over tonight. She's like, I don't want to. That's not brattiness. If she doesn't have a smile on her face or if it's not got that fun teasing element. So, you know, think of brattiness as a fun thing, a cute thing, something that you both do together where you're on the same team. But if it feels like the other person isn't on your team and they're just straight up putting like a wall between you or they're putting their hands up and saying no, like that's not brattiness. Brattiness is kind of like, it's like you've got your arms out and you're like, no. And you're secretly saying like, come here, come here, come here. Like, no, haha, <laughs> come here. Like, that. I hope you can understand the difference there. So I'll read out this guy's question. He says, hey man, I have a question that might be fun to take up on your podcast if you like. The short version is how to tame a bratty girl. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of skip bits of what he's written here. I'll just read out the, you know, important parts. So he matched on Tinder a few days ago with this 18 year old chick who looks like his type. She speaks apparently eight languages. What's that called? That's called a poly, polygot, 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 I think P-O-L-Y-G-O-T. She apparently, yeah, so her English is super bad. So we spoke in Spanish. Yeah, this guy speaks multiple languages too. Uh, leading up to the date, <laughs> cute. Leading up to the date, she had quite a few safety concerns. Should she bring security? Do I have my own security? Could I send a picture of myself? And then she says, you look like someone who's aggressive with sex. Like, <laughs> okay, this, I, I like this chick already. She's adorable. My, Emmy, Emmy, my girlfriend, asked me something similar the first time we met she was like can you i'm really scared can you please just promise me that you're not a serial killer like she literally texted me that and i was like silly i gave that up years ago i don't do that anymore so yeah that's cute should she bring security do you have your own security uh he says okay we're in bogota which is in spain i think i think and she's going quite far out of her neighborhood so i get it yeah fair enough yeah and 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 these kind of questions, like, if anything, I like those questions. I really like when someone speaks out, right? Like when a woman or a guy says, I'm nervous or, you know, they kind of hint at it with this. Like, do you have security? Should I bring my own security? It's nice when they basically say, look, I'm, I'm nervous. I really like when people are open and honest. And so as best you can, I would always meet that with like appreciation and praise. I would always say like, yo, hey, I really appreciate you being honest. Like, you know, or I really appreciate you telling me you're nervous. That's really cool of you. Like most people don't admit that stuff. Like I'm a little bit nervous too. Or, or you can say something like, you know, we'll just have a casual coffee. We'll have a drink, like no pressure. Like it's fine. Like we're meeting in public anyway. Like I appreciate you telling me you're nervous. I would always, always, always praise that kind of shit. And a lot of you might not think to praise that because you're like, oh, well, I didn't know that's a good thing. Yes, it's a fucking good thing. If another human being, or especially someone that you're going to sleep with, tells you they're nervous or tells you they have hesitations, because now you can trust them. You can trust that when you get to the point where you're having sex, if they're nervous or they don't want to do something or they're hesitant or they're unsure, they will tell you. 
And so you never have to second guess, like, did she actually want all the things we did? Or did she maybe just kind of go along with it because she didn't know how to say no? Or because she was nervous or she wanted to please me or she was worried that I would be disappointed. It's it's a really fucking good thing if someone can tell you that they're nervous. And it, it applies the other way as well. Like any guys, if you can just admit to a woman, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about this, you know, but we'll have fun. Like if you can be open and honest with that stuff, my God, like... That shit's really important. So I would praise the shit out of that. I don't know if this guy did, but but yeah, like praise the shit out of a woman that that, that or a person that is honest about nervousness. Uh, so basically they go to a bar. She's exactly his type, like super tiny, seems nervous at first. Yeah, well, we already know she's nervous. Her legs are literally shaking constantly. So I just try and build some comfort and crack some jokes. Yeah. So anytime I see a chick that's really, or it applies the other way as well, women, but anytime I'm on a date with a woman and she's really, really, really nervous, I will point that out. I will like address the elephant in the room because nothing makes you feel more nervous than being nervous, but trying to pretend that you're not or being afraid that the other person will find out. So I just point it out. I'm like, oh, you're a little bit nervous. And then they're, they're always going to tell the truth, right? Because it's a relief to be able to tell the truth. I'm, I'm allowing them that relief. They'll go, yeah, I am kind of nervous. And I go, oh, that's okay. Like, you know, what would make you feel better? What do you want to do to feel better? Or you can even say things like, you know, in a little bit, you'll feel better. I promise. We'll talk for a little bit. You'll feel better. Like addressing that elephant in the room, even just pointing it out like, hey, are you a little bit nervous? And then she goes, yes. That's a relief in itself. That's like 95% of the relief, just going, like, oh, God, I don't have to hide it anymore. He knows. Okay, fine. And he doesn't seem to mind. Okay, cool. Like, nothing bad is going to happen because I'm nervous. Okay. You can even say other things like, hey, we'll go slow. Like, if there's ever anything you don't want to do, just tell me. Like, I'm not going to push you. You know, whatever you're comfortable with, we'll do. If you feel like we're moving, we're moving too fast or we do something you don't want to do, just say, hey, can we please slow down? And I'll go, yeah, cool, easy, done. So that usually makes it, a, you know, her feel a lot better. And, and again, the reason that you're doing a lot of this stuff, obviously just because it's nice and we've all been nervous and it's nice when someone helps us through that nervousness. But on top of that, it's like the sex, the intimacy, the relationship, all of that is better. But if we're just talking about the sex here, obviously this guy's just meeting this woman for some casual sex and, you know, friends with benefits kind of thing. The sex is so much better if you can point this stuff out because basically you're saying, hey, I'm paying attention to you. I can see you when you're nervous. I can see you when you're hesitant. I can, I understand. I empathize. And then what does that mean? That means she can trust you. She can open up during the actual, you know, when you go to the bedroom and you have sex, it means she doesn't have to sort of hold back because she's like, oh, he can tell when I'm nervous. He's going to take care of me. He's going to be empathetic as best you possibly can. So the sex ends up being a hell of a lot better like infinitely better. She'll open up to you. She'll be more kinky with you. She will be more filthy. She'll tell you her biggest fetishes and fantasies. She doesn't have to hold back because she's like, this guy gets it. He's going to be, you know, nice to me. There was a philosophy that I really liked. I still like back in my days when I was reading all of the red pill stuff, right? And one of the philosophies was women love a man who just gets it. And what they meant by that is essentially women love a guy who understands women. And that's something you build. It's something you learn. And I don't expect you to, you know, I certainly didn't just understand women immediately, right? Like, but the more women that you date, the more you ask these kind of questions, the more you bridge that gap between you and them by reaching out and saying, Hey, I see that you're nervous. You know, are you okay? Like, or are you nervous? Like the more you sort of bridge those gaps and come to understand women, the more you do get to that point where you're like, Hey, I get it. I know what's going on. And women fucking love that because it's like, you'll be the first guy that actually has, you'll be the first guy that actually notices that she's nervous and goes, Oh, are you a little bit nervous? And she's like, Oh, fucking thank God. I don't have to sit here on this awkward date pretending. And again, when you finally get to the bedroom or when you go to the bedroom, she can then completely open up to you. Cause she's like, this guy fucking gets it. I don't have to worry that he's going to judge me. I don't have to worry that he's going to think I'm a slut or something. If I open up too much sexually, I don't have to worry that he won't know where my boundaries are. He gets it. This, this motherfucker gets it. Cool. I can just let go. And especially for women during sex, letting go is probably the thing that they struggle with the most, at least the first couple of times that you sleep with someone new. I've talked about this with orgasms. A lot of women can't orgasm without that like feeling of letting go. And so I've lost count of the number of women that just say like, I can't, 
I, like I've never orgasmed with a guy until I've slept with him like four or five times. Like I just, I can't, like I have to learn to trust. I have to learn that he isn't going to judge me for the way I orgasm. I have to learn, I have to know that he isn't going to get impatient if it takes me a little while to orgasm. I have to know that his neighbors don't mind, or I have to know that he doesn't have roommates that would hear me if I orgasm too loud. I have to know that he doesn't think I look funny when I orgasm. Like for women, a lot of, for a lot of women, orgasming takes a, a fair chunk of trust in like letting go. And so the more you have these kind of conversations, the easier it is for her to just fucking let go and go, and go you know what? I can fucking orgasm the first time I see you because you get it. I, I can see that you get it. You understand. You somewhat understand that I'm nervous. You somewhat understand that I might be a little bit scared and say, do you have security? Like, you know, you, you somewhat understand what it's like to be a woman and to be nervous about this shit to be the weaker sex when i say weaker I, maybe a, a kinder way of saying that because i don't think women are weak but like the fairer sex the 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 one that's in the position of more vulnerability and men are vulnerable too in the bedroom let's be honest like men are very vulnerable guys i work with mostly men like but i think women have a lot of like physical vulnerability being smaller so yeah if you can be that guy that just understands it and just gets it and again that's something you learn by asking questions the only reason I got to understand women was by I just asked every woman, yo, help me understand you, please. Yo, are you nervous? Yo, what's it? I would literally ask, and this is something that I recommend all of you do, in bed, after you have sex with a woman, when you're both laying there relaxed in that ask afterglow, just say, what's it like being a woman? I would literally ask that question. What's it like being a woman? And they would just open up to you. And then you say, okay, here's what it's like being a man. Are there any similarities? Are there any differences? What you find is there's mostly similarities. Men and women are pretty fucking similar. You ask questions like, you know, what do you think it's like being a man? So you can get an, an insight into what a lot of women think men are like. And then you can say to her, here's what I think it's like being a woman. Is that right or wrong? Most of the time at the start, you'll be wrong about what you think it's like to be a woman. You'll think it's, uh, I've heard so many guys that go, man, it must be so easy being a woman, you know, just getting attention all the time. Like everyone just likes you and is nice to you and gives you validation and men want to fuck you all of the time. When you actually talk to women about that stuff, I think you'd be surprised with some of the answers. But yeah, I got massively sidetracked here, but I like talking about this shit. I, I like talking about like empathy and understanding because ultimately it's, it's a more peaceful way to you for you to go through life, especially dating and sex. If you just understand women, if you can learn to understand women, and really women are not difficult to understand at all. You just haven't fucking asked any of them. And women, hey, women, I will say the same to you. How many women say, oh, men just want one thing. I don't understand men. Men are so hard to understand. It's like, have you ever actually fucking asked a man? Yo, can you help me understand you, please? Men would sit there and talk to you for fucking 50 hours if you would listen. My God, men want to be understood. And women, hey, women want to be fucking understood too. It's just that a lot of the time, both genders or people don't talk to the opposite gender and say, hey, can you please help me understand? Yo, what's it like to be you? What's it like to be a woman? What's it like to be a man? And so the more you can sort of bridge that gap in your own understanding or, or, or fill that gap in your own understanding, first of all, it's a more peaceful way to go through dating for yourself because now you just get it. The opposite gender isn't this mysterious, weird thing that's doing weird things that you can't understand and is unknowable. It's like, no, I know why she's doing that. She's insecure about her body. Oh, I understand why she didn't text me back. She's scared that I will reject her. Oh, I understand why this guy, you know, for women, I understand why this guy only wants to have sex. He's just at that stage of his life where he wants to just get laid a lot and prove that to himself that he is a man that can get laid. I, as a woman, don't have that because I know I could go and get laid fucking 30 times this week if I wanted to. Oh, okay. He must just be going through that phase or, or that this must be something that's important to him. He wants to prove to himself that he can do this because he isn't sure. I'm already sure as a woman that I can get laid if I want to. He isn't sure. And getting laid isn't that important to me, but maybe it is to him. Okay. I can understand that now. So I think you bridge that gap and it makes it easier for you. On top of that, it makes the sex 10,000 times better. Trust me. If you can understand the other gender, and again, this applies to both men and women. If you can understand the, the opposite gender, you will be infinitely better at sex. They will be infinitely better at sex because they can open up to you and trust you. And again, women, this applies to you. If you can come to understand men, which is just asking them a bunch of questions and listening 
like actually listening, not hearing what you think they said or what the right answer should be or whatever, just listening to what they say. If you can come to understand the opposite gender, my God, like they open up to you. The sex will be fucking crazy because they're like, man, this woman gets it or this guy gets it. Like, so yeah, it benefits you in all those ways. Obviously, it's nice as well to be empathetic, but it really, really, really does. You're doing this for you. You're not empathizing with other people for them. You're empathizing with you for you for how it makes you feel, for how it improves your life, for the kind of person that you become, being able to look yourself in the mirror and saying, hey, I like that I'm, you know, pretty empathetic and understanding with people, all that kind of stuff. So I will keep going. He says, you know, my jokes kind of work. We have some good banter going despite the language barrier. Again, remembering they're both speaking in Spanish. I invite her back to mine after an hour we go. Okay, she's very playful, almost to a point where it's difficult to get sexual. Yeah, this is something that a lot of like playful bratty girls will do. Um, which is kind of like a fun thing. You know, the playfulness is fun. He says, I feel low-key creepy because of her age. No, it's not because of her age. It's because of a story you tell about her age, but that's a separate discussion. Uh, and the way she was acting, but the playfulness is fun anyway. Uh, okay, so you go, she's being extra bratty. We're throwing playing cards around the room, tickling each other and shit. Yeah, like just chilling and having fun. At some point, we chill in the hammock. I cuddle her. I play with her hair. She finally comes down. Yeah, so she's probably just really fucking nervous, right? Like, and this is something that a lot of girls do. Like, when they're super nervous, they get high energy. I mean, we all kind of do when we're nervous, right? Okay, then we make out. She's a slightly aggressive kiss star. I'm guessing it's that she's probably inexperienced. And hey, I don't have a problem with aggressive kissing. Chill a bit more before we make out again. I take her to my room. Her body is super nice. She immediately pulls down my pants. Okay, so here we go. So this is the brattiness stuff. So he's talking about like she seems really into being dominated. She wants to be spanked and she's basically asking for it. Uh, yeah, it looks like the first time she wasn't super comfortable. Okay, so here's a good point. So he says the first time she wasn't super comfortable with me touching her pussy for some reason and she wouldn't let me, which always makes me feel a bit odd. So the first thing I would say there immediately, and he ended up doing this. He says, I asked her about it a bit afterwards and apparently she just hadn't had good experiences in the past and I didn't completely get it because of the language barrier. So yeah, you, you ask her about that again later on. But what I would suggest in the moment, let's say you're in the moment and you know, you're making out, you're having sex, you're having a good time. Cause it sounds like they were literally having sex, but he says, every time I tried to touch her pussy or go down on her, she wouldn't let me. And that made me feel a bit odd. I would address it immediately, like immediately. Think about it. If you're, we're going to answer, I'm going to talk about this in two separate ways. I will talk about it from your point of view and hers. So from your point of view, if you're having sex, you're in the middle of having sex and you're touching, or even if you're not, even if you're just making out and you're moving towards sex, if you touch some part of her and she doesn't let you, like she pushes her hand away or she says no, or she's not comfortable with it and you feel odd, for you, for your own safety and your own trust in yourself and trust in her, don't you want to know why? Or like, and, and she doesn't owe you an explanation. I'm not saying that, but like, don't you want to know exactly what's going on? Like, like, are you just nervous now and you want me to touch you in future? Do you want me to try again in a little bit? Um, do you just need to get more comfortable first? Do you want to go on more dates first? Is it that you've had a bad experience? And so I would need to be, you know, somewhat cognizant of that or empathetic about that and understanding and, and go gently. Is it that I was too rough? Is it that you want me to be more rough? Is it that this is a bratty little game and you would like me to, you know, make you, so to speak? You want to know the answer to these questions, right? Otherwise, it's just this weird, like, you're in this weird limbo where you're like, I don't know what the rules are. Like, what do you want? Do do should I never touch your pussy ever again for the history of the universe, but I can have sex with you, but I, my dick can go in your pussy, but not my fingers and not my mouth. Like, like what are the rules? You don't know the rules. And so you can't trust yourself and you can't trust her because you don't know what the fuck is okay. And all of us are, you know, nice, empathetic, understanding human beings who are trying to do the best during sex. We're not trying to hurt the other person. In fact, we don't want that. We want to respect their boundaries. We want them to have a good time. But if you don't know what those fucking boundaries are, how could you possibly respect them? So from your own 
safety and your own trust and your own being able to fucking relax and actually enjoy the sex and just let go and have a great time and bang the shit out of her and, and have fun, you need to understand what's going on. Again, she doesn't owe you an explanation. Like she doesn't have to say, oh, here's the reason. But you have to at least know, okay, from my point of view, what what are you cool with? What like, And then that might change in future. Fine, that's fine. But like <clears throat> right now or for the next couple of times we sleep together, what are you comfortable with? What do you want me to do? Because if I don't know, I have to fucking tiptoe around it. Like I'm trying to walk on eggshells or walk on broken glass and not set a foot wrong because I might hurt you or trigger you or upset you or you push me away. Like... And that's not what I want. I want us to have a good time here. I want us to be on the same team. And so a big part of being on the same team is, and this is why I say, just do it in the moment. Just say like, hey, like, you know, it seems like you don't want me to touch your pussy. Like, how, is everything okay? Like, do you want me to touch it later? Like, like, what's, what are the fucking rules? What do you want? Like, what do you want? And sometimes, you know, some women will go like, well, you know, I, I just, and then you say, hey, look, I'm not going to judge you. Like, it's okay. Like, if you don't want me to touch your pussy, just say so. But like, I just want to know for me so that I can relax and we can have a good time. You know, I'm assuming you want that too. So just tell me what you're comfortable with. And if you're not sure, we can just go really slow and try some stuff. And if you're, if you don't like something, you just say, hey, can we pause? And I'll stop that. We can do that too. You don't have to know all of your boundaries, but you know, I'm happy to explore them with you and figure out what they are. But I just want to know from my point of view, what you're cool with and what you, you know, you feel like you want to do so I can fucking chill and just be able to bang the shit out of you and have a great time and not have to be in my own head wondering if what I'm about to do is going to make you feel uncomfortable. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want, right? That's what everybody wants. You know, we all want to be able to just relax and have crazy good sex and not have to think about it so much. So that's from your point of view the reason why I would suggest addressing it immediately from her point of view or for her, the reason why you would address it immediately is so she can fucking trust you. If she pushes your hand away from her pussy or if she says, hey, no, don't do that. How, do, how can she trust that you won't either accidentally or intentionally or whatever, do it again? Because <clears throat> when she pushes you away, you might interpret that as like, oh, she's not ready yet, but she wants me to do it later, right? Or she's not ready now, but like, I'm assuming she'll be ready at some point for me to touch her pussy. Like, I'm sure we wouldn't date for like, let's say we sleep together for a year. I'm sure a year from now, she'd be okay with me touching her pussy, right? So there must be some point in the future that, you know, I can touch her pussy. So yeah, I'll touch her pussy in the future. She now can't trust, if, if, if you guys don't both talk about it, she can't trust that you won't in the future do, do it again. And because you haven't defined why she doesn't want you to do it, or it's not so much why she doesn't want, like if, if she would ever be comfortable with it, like you haven't basically discussed why she's pushed your hand away or what she actually means when she pushes your hand away. She can't trust that you won't do it again, or she can't trust that you won't have accidentally overstepped some other boundary that she has that she hasn't told you. And you're not a mind reader. So how could you possibly know what her boundaries are? And to be fair on her, she might not know what all her boundaries are. Sometimes we don't feel a boundary until it gets pushed up against and we go, oh, whoa, 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 sorry. I thought I would be okay with that, but I'm actually not. That's perfectly reasonable. That happens during sex, right? That's, that's something that happens during sex a lot. And so if... You guys don't talk about it or I'll flip that. If you guys do talk about it, she can then trust you. She can go, okay, we've talked about it. I've explained that, you know, I just don't want you to touch my pussy yet because you don't even have to have a because. I just don't want you to touch my pussy yet. I, I will in the future. Just give me a little bit of time, right? Like, okay, now I can trust that he gets it. He understands. Okay, I won't pressure you. Or another conversation you could have is like, I'm just not ready yet, but, you know, can I tell you when I am? Or... I'm not sure if I'm ready yet. Can we go really slow? And if it doesn't feel good, I can just, you know, can we pause? And you and the guy, you know, you will go, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, sure. Of course. Tell me if it doesn't feel good. I want you to feel good. It's only fun if you're having fun. That's my favorite saying. I say that to basically every woman that we date. And you guys and girls can steal that. Just say, hey, it's only fun if we're both having fun. It's only fun if you're having fun too. So, yeah. Of course, you can tell me if you want me to stop. So if you have this conversation and, and, and address it in the fucking moment, don't wait till afterwards. Address it in the moment. Just hit the pause button. You don't have to like massively pause and sit up in bed and be like, hmm, and get the, the notepad and pen out and be like, hmm, explain to me why you won't let me touch your vagina, young lady. Like, what is going on here? Why won't you let me touch the pussy? Like, you don't have to be all formal about it, but just sort of hit that mini pause button, have a bit of a cuddle and just be like, yeah, hey, it seems like you, you kind of like don't want me to touch you, but 
Like, did I upset you? Is it cool? I don't think I upset you. Like, what are you comfortable with? What do you What do you want to do? Like, we can go as slow as you want. I just want to know like what you're comfortable with, so I can kind of relax a little bit and not be in my own head. I want to have fun with you. I want to make sure you're having fun too. So you know, what do you want? Like, no pressure. I don't care if you want me to touch your pussy or not. I'll do whatever the fuck you you're comfortable with. Just like I wouldn't want you to do stuff to my body that I wasn't cool with. So you know, just tell me what you're cool with. Or if you don't know, we can figure it out together. If you want to, we can go really slow. Just hit the pause and have that conversation. It means you can then both relax. And I've I've done podcasts on this, and I have talked about this so many times. I have been with quite a few girls where you know we're there and we're making out we're on my couch and i will go to touch her tits or i will go to touch her pussy or whatever and she will push my hand away right and so many guys will will do this fucking thing where they go you just got to like keep making out with her a little bit and then warm her up and then you know then you touch her titties later and maybe she's not okay with it then but you just need to warm her up a little bit more and then you know eventually you know she'll let you and it's like fucking hell what are we autistic we can't use our fucking words like we're just gonna like essentially try and push someone into sex and just hope that if we push them enough they'll be okay with it like use your fucking words and i have been in that situation so many times as in where i i will touch her breasts or i will touch her, her pussy and she'll push my hand away and i will just really gently and really you know coming from a non-judgmental place i'll just you know hit the pause button i'll be like hey you know do you want me to like not touch your tits today or are you just a little nervous? Do you want me to touch later? Like, do you want to make out for a little bit first? Like, what are you cool with today? And by the way, no pressure. Like, I'm just happy making out with you if that's all you want to do. I will be honest, if we make out for a little bit, I'm going to get very fucking horny. So like, if you want to make out and you don't want to have sex, please tell me now. Because like that shit does make me really fucking horny. And like, I'm not going to hold that against you, but I'd, I'd rather just like pause right now. Like I'll, I'll, I'll honestly explain my side and, and how I fucking feel. The number of women that I've had that conversation with that they go, look, I'm just really nervous. Like I just, I like you. I just, is it okay? I, I, I just don't want to go too quick. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like what, what do you want to try then today? Like, what do you want to try? Do you want to just make out? Do you want me to play with your titties a little bit? Do you want to play with my dick? Like, what do you want to do? The number of women that I have had that conversation with and then we sort of just like go really slow and they go, okay, well, I guess you could touch my breast, but if it's, you know, if, if it moves too fast, is it okay if we, you know, is it okay if we just go slow? And I'm like, yeah, you just tell me what you're comfortable with. And if, if we go too fast, you just say like, hey, can we pause? And I'll fucking pause immediately. Like, I won't judge you. I won't be mad at you. That's another thing that a lot of women will sort of ask in that conversation. They'll say, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I just don't want you to be disappointed. Or I, I want to do a good job for you. Or I don't want you to be mad at me. Make it really clear. Like, why would I be mad at you? You're, you're speaking with integrity. You're telling me I don't want you to touch my tits or I don't want you to touch my pussy or here's what I'm comfortable with. I respect that. That's you speaking with integrity and actually stating what you want. That's you being honest. Why the fuck would I be mad that you're honest, that you're an in, a human being that can act and speak with integrity? Why would I be mad at that? I respect that. That's fucking cool. I like when I speak with integrity. I fucking like it when you do too. So make that very clear. But the number of women, to get back to the point, the number of women that I've had this conversation with, and we end up having sex, when at the start, she would like push my hand away and be like, no, no, like don't touch my titties. And just by having this fucking conversation and saying like, yo, okay, hey, pause. Like, I don't want to pressure you. I'm not going to push you. Like, I don't want to keep touching you if you're not comfortable with it. Just tell me what you're comfortable with. Man, the number of times just that conversation can help you both relax and realize, oh shit, this guy is on my team. Like, I don't need to push him away because he's not the fucking enemy. I just have to say to him like, hey, can we go slow? And he'll go, yeah, sure, whatever you want, whatever you fucking need, let's do it. And so having that conversation and... When I say this, don't think of it as like a strategy to get laid. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Hey, it's a strategy to get pussy. Just just have a conversation with her and then you'll get laid. That's not what this is. This is you pausing and saying to the other person, what are you comfortable with? I want to make sure we're both on the same team here. I want to make sure we both have fun. And obviously, there's been plenty of times where I have this conversation and we still don't end up having sex that day. Hey, cool, great. I respect that you spoke to me with integrity. I respect that you were able to admit to me what you wanted. I w I respect the fact that you had fucking boundaries. Because again, if you have boundaries and you don't have sex, like, like you decide you don't want to have sex with me that day, fucking good. 
Now I can trust that you're not going to just walk into something you don't want to do, that you're not going to let me do something that you didn't want me to do. And then I have to sit there and go, well, fuck, did I pressure her? I don't think I did. I asked several times and she didn't say no. And, you know, like you don't have that messy kind of gray area, shitty feeling of like, man, like I wish she'd just said she didn't want to do it today. I wish she just said, hey, can we do it later or can we wait or can we go slower so yeah i really love when someone and and this is why i encourage you guys to and you girls to encourage the people that you date and sleep with to be as honest with you as they can and to speak with that integrity like, like for them to speak with that integrity and sometimes you go first you have to go first this is how you start these conversations you know she tells you she's nervous or you see that she's nervous and then you speak with your own integrity and say hey i can you know it seems like you're a little bit nervous like is that the case? Like you, you kind of go first there. So big giant tangent. Let's keep going. So he, he goes to be fair. Like I said, he goes on to say that he did speak to this girl about it afterwards, but I would definitely do that in the moment. I would do that in the moment just so you can both fucking chill and relax. You know what I mean? So you can actually just get down to the business of having sex without having to worry about like, will I overstep her boundaries? Will she not tell me if she's uncomfortable with something? Will she just keep pushing my hand away? Just having your hand pushed away during sex and then not knowing why does that feel good no it doesn't <laughs> it makes you feel like you've done something wrong like you're a bad person and you don't fucking know why you're just like shit did i do something wrong and obviously you haven't it's not about you it's about her obviously but if you can talk about it and she can go you know hey it's this is what i'm comfortable with or i'm not sure what i'm comfortable with can we just go slow or i don't think i'm ready for this today you can then relax and go cool now i know what the fucking rules are she doesn't want to bang today but she's happy to just f us to make out and maybe me play with her tits cool now i've got that in my head i can just relax and enjoy that I, I can actually enjoy the thing that she said she wanted and she can enjoy it too and we both know we're not going any further than that cool we'll go further than that next time sweet great hey let's just relax and make you can almost like relax and be grateful for what you're both enjoying in that moment rather than sitting there thinking, man, I wish we could go further. I wish she'd stop pushing my hand away or how come she keeps rejecting me and just relax and actually fucking chill and enjoy the damn thing. So yeah, kudos to him for talking about it afterwards. Brilliant. Good. And I know this guy, this guy's a really fucking good human being, but I would encourage him to, and any of you listening, do it earlier, do it even earlier. And then it's like, you can just chill. You can just chill and have a great time. I think people have this notion in their head that once you start having sex, you're not like allowed to break the fourth wall. Like you're not allowed to pause. You're not allowed to talk and have a normal conversation anymore. You're in like sex mode and you can't break sex mode. It's like you, you've been plugged into the matrix and you can't just unplug. It's like, that's not what sex is. Like you can pause as much as you want even during the most like hardcore BDSM dominant submissive, like right in the middle of sex, you're literally acting out like a sex scene. You're acting out like a porn scene. You can pause right there. You can just talk normal. You can go, yo, how does that feel? I do all the time. My sex, basically the entire time, especially when we're with a new person is talking. Like, yo, how does that feel? Does that feel good? You're doing such a fucking good job. God, you look so fucking hot. Like I'm just constantly talking and pausing and saying like like if we get to a point where it seems that she's uncomfortable with something i'll pause and be like yo do you not want me to do that you just fucking talk about it so good job talking about it at all you can do that way earlier and then i feel like it's just easier to relax and enjoy the damn thing it really is so he says after they talked she ended up okay so <laughs> exactly my point so after they had sex they talked about it afterwards like you know how come you're you you were nervous about me touching you and she said she didn't have good experiences and then she changed her mind and he went down on her and she really enjoyed it exactly my point that's exactly my point so i'm so glad that he talked about it afterwards if you talk about it in the moment she might tell you you talk through it you go like okay cool i get it and then she's like you know what okay you can lick my pussy and then she fucking loves it so exactly my point when people understand each other a lot of the time or when, when people feel like the other person understands them, that helps them open up and relax a lot. And remember what I said at the start of the podcast with women's sexuality and particularly their orgasms, a lot of that requires them feeling like they can let go and open up and relax. And so if you have some of these conversations, if she pushes your hand away or, or isn't comfortable with something, she goes, okay, this guy gets it. He's listening. He's understanding. I've told him that I had a bad experience in the, you know, earlier which obviously implies, so I don't like to be pushed into anything. 
you know, I want you to go slow. And he goes, cool, I get it. Like, I can go slow. And then she feels like, damn, like, he understands. He's going to be patient now. He's going to be nice to me. He's going to go gentle because he understands the reason. He's not going to push me. He's not going to get mad at me if I take my time, if I need to take my time. You know what? Fuck it. I can close my eyes and he can lick me and I can feel great. So, yeah, having these conversations definitely means you end up getting better sex. And he goes on to say that. So, they then had sex one more time and it was even better. Yeah, exactly. It was better because you fucking understood each other a little bit. Sex gets better the more you understand each other. Because again, you can both let go. She can just let go and go, this guy's not going to judge me. He's not going to think anything poorly of me. He understands me. He understands my kinks and my fetishes and all of that. I can just let go and be crazy with him. I can do wild shit that I wouldn't do if I didn't trust him. And you in the reverse, the same thing. If you know where her boundaries are, or if you know what she's uncomfortable with and what she is comfortable with, you can just go to fucking town on her ass. You can just go absolutely mental. You can be like Mr. Fucking Christian Grey, Fifty Shades of Grey. You can just go batshit insane on her. You know what I mean? Because you know where the boundaries are. You can just go mental. You don't have to feel like you're holding back. You can just be two absolute animals just doing filthy, nasty, evil. And I mean evil in a good way. Filthy, nasty, amazing, wonderful shit to each other. And just go mental on each other because you know where the boundaries are. And some of the boundaries you figure out short. Like you don't know all the boundaries just from one conversation. But I think you guys get what I mean. It's like you don't have to hold back as much going, oh, why did she push my hand away? Well, I have no idea. So how do I know if I, what if I pull her hair? She pushes me away. What if I spank her and she freaks out? What if I touch her tits and she freaks out? What if I touch her pussy again and she freaks out? Like you don't know because you haven't had the conversation. So he goes on to say it ended up getting quite late. I let her sleep over. We, we fucked one more time. It was better. Uh, I sent her on her way this morning after we had sex and I fucked the shit out of her one more time. Yep, brilliant. So they had sex like, what's that, like three times? Having sex like animals. Uh, Okay, so this is the brattiness. This is the bratty stuff. So a few hours later, I see that she's uploaded a picture to her WhatsApp story wearing my blue light glasses. So... These glasses are glasses that I've talked about all the time. They block the blue light, so you wear them in the evening. Blue light keeps you awake. You wear these glasses in the evening as you are winding down for bed, and they help you sleep. I talk about them all the time. I have a pair myself, and through the magic of pausing this video, I can show you them. Yeah, these glasses. So uh, he had a pair of these glasses, and it looks like she took them. <laughs> So he says, this little brat stole them. She sent him a picture saying, do I look pretty? So he said, when I saw this, it actually made me smile a lot and shake my head. This fucking chick. Now she's begging me via text to spank her really hard as punishment for stealing my glasses. Jesus, what have I gotten myself into? So yeah, here's a central question. And I know we've had a 40 minute question and I haven't even answered the, we've had a 40 minute podcast and I haven't even answered the question of how to tame a bratty girl, which was the entire title of this podcast. Maybe I'll do a part two where I actually answer the question, but I feel like we went, ah, I could, couldn't I? I could do this as part two. I could just call this like, you know, maybe I call it something clickbaity, like how to handle last minute resistance, which is what, you know, a lot of guys call like when a girl pushes your hand away, last minute resistance. I, maybe I could call it that. And then part two, which I just released tomorrow. So it's like, you won't have to wait. You'll only be waiting like a day. I promise. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll call this part one. And part two, I will answer the actual question of of how to tame a brat. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Fuck it. No, no, because you guys, whatever. I don't want you to have watched the whole fucking video and then go like, oh, well, now I got to wait till tomorrow. So we'll we'll answer the question. I'll be fairly quick. My friend Cam wants me to record a podcast with him right now. So I got to go in a sec, but. We'll blast through this. So basically, like, how do I punish this bratty chick for stealing my glasses? So I did a podcast a while ago that I will link to in the description called Passive Submissive, Assertive Submissive, Passive Dominant, and Assertive Dominant. And I basically talk about how there's there's sort of four categories when you're talking about, you know, being dominant or submissive. Most people think of it in terms of, like, there's a dominant person and a submissive person. But within each of those two things, there's actually an additional two breakdowns. So within the submissive, you can be passive and submissive, or you can be assertive and submissive. 
this chick and any bratty girl is assertive submissive. What that means is they will sit there and say, I want you to dominate me. They will actively say that. They will out loud say, I like dominant men. I like being dominated. I want you to punish me. I Look, I stole your glasses. I've been naughty. You need to punish me. That's very assertive, isn't it? She's assertive about the fact that she wants to be submissive. The opposite would be passive submissive, where she's just submissive and she doesn't say anything. She just keeps her mouth shut and she's just kind of like quiet-ish during sex. She'll moan. She'll tell you what feels good, but she's not going to actively assert herself and say, I want you to dominate me. She'll, she'll give back. So if you say, does that feel good? She'll say, yes. If you say, call me daddy, she'll say, oh, yes, daddy. Like, But it's more like she waits for you to take the lead. So any brative, bratty girls are assertive, submissive. And so starting with that, if a girl is very assertive about this stuff, she's literally telling you what she wants. In this case, she's literally saying, how are you going to, you know, I need you to spank me really hard as punishment. Jesus, you cannot get more assertive than that. She's literally telling you exactly what she fucking wants. Brilliant. Great. She's basically laying it up on a silver platter for you. She's handing it to you saying, hey, this is what I like. Here's how you can fuck the shit out of me and just absolutely give me everything that I want. And so I would have a lot of fun with that in two separate ways. You can obviously just give her what she wants. You know, this guy can just put her over his knee and just spank the shit out of her and go, there you go, bad girl. You're getting exactly what you asked for. You're getting what you needed. Or you can have fun being the dominant one and play with this a little bit. And you can go, you want me to spank you really hard as punishment? That doesn't sound like punishment. You're asking for it. How would that be a punishment? I don't think that's a punishment. In, in fact, I think the, I think if I was to really punish you, I think I won't spank you. But, but tell her this in person rather than over text, like get her to come over, tell her all this in person. And what I would do, and this is something fun that I love to do when I'm with bratty girls that want to be punished, I would tie her wrists up, maybe blindfold her as well, get her completely naked on your bed. And then, you know, you're kind of holding, hold her wrists above her head quite firmly. So she's held in place and then say, you've been a very bad girl, haven't you? And she'll say, yes, you know, yes, please punish me, sir. Oh my God, I've been so bad. And then you go, I don't think that's punishment. In fact, I think punishment would be not giving you what you want. And she'd be like, no, please, but I've been so bad. I, I have to be spanked, please. And you're like, no, that sounds like a reward. That sounds like what you want. In fact, I think punishment would be if I just had sex with you right now and it was really gentle sex, just really vanilla sex, just really slow, gentle, sensual, careful sex, just moving my dick in and out very slowly, making sure I don't hurt you in any way, just super gentle. I think that'd be punishment. And then start having sex with her just like that. And she'll be spending the whole time going, no, please, 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 like spank me, go harder, please, like pull my hair, do anything, please. Like I need punishment. I've been bratty. And you go, no, I think your punishment is, is realizing that brats don't always get what they want. And you can have so much fun with this. Trust me, you can have so much fucking fun with this, like doing the opposite of what she's saying. And if you want to, you can mix in a little bit of spanking there, a little bit of punishment. You can go, okay, you've been a very good girl here. You've been letting me have really gentle sex with you. That feels really nice for me. I like that. I think you've been good. I think your reward now is that I will give you a spank. You spank her for a little bit and then you go back to the sex that, you know, the really gentle sex. And then she'll obviously be begging and begging and begging. You can have so much fun with this, so much fun with this. So, you know, again, to summarize, when she wants you to punish her or to tame her, you can either give her what she wants, which is the punishment, the, the punishment. It's not really punishment if she wants it, but you can give her that or you can not give her that and tell her, hey, no, you don't get that because that sounds like a reward. So, so have fun with the psychology of all of this and remember that it's fun. It's not a bad thing. Like she's not being an annoying brat or something. And, and there's a difference. Like if she just stole your glasses and then you text her and you're like, yo, have you seen my glasses? And she's like, no. And then you find out she took them. That's not bratty. And then if you're like, yo, where, why did you take my fucking glasses? She's just like, I didn't. Like, like that's psychopathy. That's that's a sociopath, right? So I think you guys can see the difference. Like, I think you can see where the bratty element comes in. Sh this chick took his glasses, sent him a fucking selfie wearing them, and didn't even address the fact that she took them. She's just like, do I look pretty in these glasses? And then he's like, those are my fucking glasses, woman. And then she's like, oh, no, you're going to have to spank me. Oh, no, I'm so naughty. Like, that's obviously bratty, right? That's so incredibly bratty and fun. So always remember that this stuff is fun. It's not a bad thing. And so even when this guy and some of you will ask the question and the title of this podcast is like, how do you tame 
a bratty girl, a bratty girl, you're never really actually taming her. You don't want to tame her. Taming would mean like she stops doing it all together, but that wouldn't be fun. That's what she wants. And, and obviously if you're someone that wants that too, that it, don't, you don't tame it. It's almost like you're playing with it. Do you get what I mean? So rather than how do I tame her, here's a better question to ask yourself or a better mindset. It's like, how do I dominate her? How do I play with this element with her? How do I have fun with this with her? What are some different ways we can have fun with this? So don't think of it like I have to step on her and, and I know this isn't what this guy is thinking, but don't think of it like I have to, I have to quash or squash this bratty side of her, or I have to like dominate and assert myself over her. You can do that. And that can be really fun. Like out dominating a bratty girl can be so fucking hot. Trust me. Like just absolutely just tying her up, putting your hand over her mouth and just fucking the shit out of her while she's, you know, trying to be bratty. And you're just saying like, you don't get to be bratty because I'm the fucking big man with muscles and I am just going to destroy you. Like that is fun. That's really fun. On top of that, you can also just sort of play with it. Like I'm saying here, like the example I gave before where you go, no, I don't think you get a spank. I don't think you get that because I think that's what you would want. So I think I'm going to have to not give you that because that sounds like a reward. Like like playing with the psychology of it is is a lot of fun with this stuff. And that will make her want to be even more bratty. Another thing you can do. Uh, wait, so staying on that point. Think about it like this. It's not you versus her or it's not you trying to out dominate her and show like, yo, I'm the fucking man in charge. Like you silly bitch. Like it's none of that. It's you and her on the same team. You're playing with this brattiness together. It's a dynamic that you're both sharing. She does her part, which is the brattiness. You do your part, which is either the punishment or the, you know, playing with it or, you know, not giving her what she wants. It's, it's you two playing together. It's like yin and yang. You come together and you fit together nicely. It's a dynamic that you're both part of and you sort of need both parts for it to work. The mission isn't to like tame that part out of her because then you have nothing left it's just a guy that's dominant and she's submissive and that's fun too that's a completely different dynamic but we're talking specifically about the bratty or the um, assertive submissive dynamic right where she's assertive and submissive assertive about the fact that she is submissive another thing i will quickly throw in is if you don't like bratty girls please don't feel like you have to do this like you don't have to do this stuff. And I would say in that case, if you're someone that really doesn't like bratty girls and maybe you meet one and in your brain you go, okay, how do I beat this out of her? How do I just get her to stop being bratty? You can do that. But I feel like there might just be an incompatibility with the two of you, right? Like if she's someone who's really, really, really bratty, maybe you're trying and you're trying to get that out of her. Maybe like, as in you're trying to stop that, stop that part of her or shut that part of her down. It might be like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, right? It might be a little bit that maybe you guys just aren't super compatible or maybe you are compatible, but you are going to have to be okay with the fact that she might be a little bit bratty and not get frustrated by that or disappointed in that or, or wish that it wasn't there because that's not really fully embracing the person. That's kind of trying to shave off the edges of them. Like, let me shave the corners off so they're around a shape. Like, that's not being the person. You're trying to change the person there. And generally speaking, when you try and change someone else, if they don't want to change themselves, when you try and change someone because you don't like them, generally speaking, that's a recipe for unhappiness in yourself. You can help someone change if they want to. I've obviously helped image and change a whole lot. And she's helped me change. But that's because we wanted to change those things. And the other person is like your cheerleader going like, yeah, you can do it. But changing someone who doesn't really want to change and you're only changing them because you don't like that part of them. That can be a recipe for disaster for sure. Another thing I'll say is you can also be a little bit bratty too. As in, if she's super bratty, you can sort of tease her. You can be a little bit of a smart ass yourself. This is something I definitely do whenever we meet a bratty girl. Imogen has said to me a million times, Andy, you're the brat in the relationship, even though I'm the dominant one. Because there's times where I just, I tease, I make jokes, I have fun, I'm a bit silly, you know, <laughs> especially in 2020 with all the lockdowns and all of the masks and all of the vaccine passports and all that bullshit. I was the one that was a fucking brat. 
I definitely was. And I was coming from a place of like principle and integrity and like, no, I'm, I, I'm, I don't want this vaccine thing. No, that's just not for me. I've done my research. I don't want to know. Thank you. It was coming from a very like a place of integrity and self-honesty, but it would often look like, like brattiness. Like I'd go into a store and they'd be like, you're not wearing a, you have to wear a mask. And I'd be like, no, like I was a brat. I was being a brat. And again, I was doing that from my own integrity, but people would be like, but you have to leave. And I'd be like, no, but would you have to wear a mask? At one point, we even got accosted by police who were like, we're going to have to give you like a $3,000 fine or whatever the fucking fine was. And I was just like, no. And I, <laughs> I was like bratty to the fucking police. So if anything, like, Emmy is probably right that sometimes I can be the brat in the relationship. But, you know, the point that I'm trying to make here is you can have a little bit of fun with this. So if a girl is a little bit bratty, you can kind of be bratty back. Like, so if she goes, you have to spank me, then you can just be silly and be like, you have to suck my dick. And then she'll be like, I'm not sucking your, she'll fold her arms and she'll be like, I'm not sucking your dick until you spank me. And you're like, I'm not spanking you until you suck my dick. And then she'll go, fine, I'm going to sit here and then I don't care because you're the one that's horny. And you'll go, well, I'm going to jerk off to porn, so I don't care. And you can like have a smile on your face while you're doing it. Obviously be silly with each other. Being kind of just like have a bit of like, you can meet brattiness with your own silliness and brattiness yourself. Like you can definitely do that. Like that's a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. So you can play around with that if you want to. Um, one final thing I'll say is if you like the idea of a girl who's a little bit playful and cheeky and silly and bratty and cute and all of this kind of stuff, like it sounds like this girl is definitely being, you can help her be bratty. If this is obviously something that she wants herself or a side of herself she would be willing to explore or try, and you would just do that by encouraging. You just literally say, hey, I like it when girls are a little bit fun and silly and cutesy and bratty. And, you know, why don't you try, why don't we role play? You try, I tell you to do something, you try saying no, and then I spank you and punish you for it. And we see how that feels. And punishment, if it's not clear, punishment is like a fun thing. Don't like seriously punish someone because you'll you hurt them psychologically. But you're punishing in a fun way. You're spanking with a smile on your face. Or you can even spank with a more serious thing, but make sure she wants it. Let's make that clear. But you can, yeah, encourage her to be a bit more bratty. I have definitely encouraged Emmy to come out of her shell and be a lot more bratty and a little bit of a cute smart ass sometimes. I've encouraged that a lot over the last four years. That's been a big project of both of us is like helping her work up her self-esteem. You guys wouldn't know it now, but any of you OGs who knew her from, you know, four or so years ago, five years ago, I think four and a half years ago when I first met her, you would know like, oh my God, like she, she was so unconfident. You know, I tell this story all the time. She couldn't make eye contact with men, could barely make eye contact with women, but she definitely couldn't make eye contact with men. She couldn't make eye contact with me. Like literally couldn't look into my eyes. Like I would look into her eyes and she'd just like look down like every fucking time. And so it's been a big project for both of us, or it was a big project. You know, she's, she's great now. Not that she wasn't great then, but you guys get what I mean. She's, she was very in her own shell. And so a big part of what I've helped her with is the ability to say no when she wants to. And also in a bratty way, the ability to have fun with it and tease a little bit. Cause I'm someone myself that makes a lot of jokes and I'm a bit of a smart ass sometimes. And I do it in a fun joking way, but she's slowly, particularly over the last like year or two, she's really started being a bit of a smart ass sometimes like, and she, <laughs> she's such a little fucking smart ass. She will say back to me the things that I would say, because I'm often bratty and a bit of a smart ass and stuff. And so she will feed back to me the exact same lines that I say. <laughs> and then I'll say, are you being a brat? And she'll go like, you're being a brat. You're the one that says it. And then I'll be like, no, you're being a brat now by saying that I'm the one that like, you, you know, you're the submissive in the relationship. You're not supposed to like point out what the, the dominant did. And then she's like, yeah, but like you're that's hypocritical. And I'm like, yeah, and a good submissive doesn't point out when a dominant is hypocritical. And she goes, that's not true. And we have fun. If it's not clear, there's a big smile on our face the entire time we're both doing this. And so then I will punish her. And I usually do that with tickling her. Tickling, by the way, is the easiest way to, to punish a girl in a really fun way. But yeah, this is something that she's definitely really come out of her shell with. And she'll even sometimes make jokes with strangers and be a little bit of a smart ass with other people. Not as much because she's definitely very comfortable and trusting around me. And she knows that nothing bad will happen if she's bratty with me. So less so with other people, but she's definitely come out of her shell. And she's, she can be very bratty at times in a very cute way. If it's not clear, it's very endearing 
and very sweet and very adorable and it makes you like them more and that's at the end of the day what all of this is about as this guy has said in his you know message to me when he's telling this story he seems to really like that this girl is bratty it seems to be like a really fun dynamic for both of them to explore and to share together and that's the point here this is something you guys share together it's something you guys get to engage in together it's not meant to be serious. It's not meant to be something you both don't like. If one of you finds that you don't like it, I would either figure out why don't I like it? Am I just trying to dominate the person and you know I'm not just enjoying them for who they are? Or go a little deeper and say, maybe I just don't like bratty girls and that's okay. I don't have to like bratty girls. I'm going to like whoever I like. Fine, maybe I, I won't sleep with this girl or I won't keep dating this girl and that's perfectly fine too. So at the end of the day, this stuff is meant to be fun. I will leave a link in the description to the previous podcast I did about passive submissive, assertive submissive, passive dominant, and assertive dominant. So I'll leave a link so you can go and listen to that. If you would like to hit me up for coaching, I got big sexy coaching packages. I will leave a link in the description below to that. As always, ladies and gentlemen, go out there and crush those goals.